A narcissistic mother will be so jealous of her own daughter because she Listen, sees man. in her daughter. Her daughter has the ability to be a better no. mother, a better woman, a better human being than what the fuck no. was. So right she there. Wanna this shit. Right there. Even when you become an adult right and you there. move far away, you can move to another city. She wanna f*** your shit, bro. She sees your potential. She sees what you can do. She sees your positivity, your charisma, your happiness, your love. She sees that you can do just about everything she can. She, she can't do because she's got no willpower. She's a weak motherfucker. Things my narcissistic mother used to say to me. Make your own food or go to bed hungry. I don't care. Stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. I do everything for you and I get this in return? You can't be friends with her. Be friends with that other girl. She's better for your reputation. You have to do what I want, no matter what I say. You're trying to embarrass me. You only think about yourself. Why did you do this? To hurt me? Why do you have to make a big deal out of everything? Why do you have to be so sensitive about everything? No one cares what you have to say. You're so spoiled, you don't deserve everything I have done for you. You're a horrible child, you've never appreciated anything I've done for you. That never happened, you must have imagined it. You had a wonderful childhood, I don't care what you and your sister says. If you don't do what I say, I'll unend myself. You'll be sorry when I'm gone. We're daughters of narcissistic mothers. Her loveless marriage makes her jealous of yours. We're daughters of narcissistic mothers. Do you really think you should be eating that? We're daughters of narcissistic mothers. Anything you can cook, she can cook better. We're daughters of narcissistic mothers. She's not just your mother. She's your best friend. We're daughters of narcissistic mothers. Your wedding day is also her wedding day. We're daughters of narcissistic mothers. Before you act out, consider this. What would the neighbors think? We're daughters of narcissistic mothers. Rewriting the version of the story that they told everyone else. We're daughters of narcissistic mothers. Your business is also her business. We're daughters of narcissistic mothers. And that childhood trauma never happened. We're daughters of narcissistic mothers. And no matter how large the envelope, we'll still refuse the certified mail. So many black mothers um, treat their daughters like shit. Your mama is a narcissist, honey. Nobody taught black women about narcissistic abuse. We're just now learning about it. If your mama treated you like shit your entire childhood, guess where she got it? She got it from your grandparents. And they got it from their parents and their parents and grandparents. It, that's the generational curse that people are referring to. And black people think it came from the slave masters. Honey, let me tell y'all something. Narcissistic abuse is biblical. Go through the Bible. There's so many stories of demonic behavior. Queen Jezebel, Pharaoh, too many narcissists, Judas, were all in the Bible. The slave master didn't start shit. He just basically passed the baton. So that's why your mama's jealous, competitive, uh, gossipy, like she can't stand you. It has nothing to do with you. She's just a narcissistic demon. Narcissist mothers are absolutely detrimental to their daughters. Narcissistic mothers are in this competition with their daughters. They may constantly criticize their daughters for what they're wearing, how their hair looks, how their makeup looks, who their friends are, what they're studying in school. They're just going to make fun of them for everything. They'll over-sexualize them and kind of make them understand that that's where their worth is. Because let's be honest, that's how they manipulate and believe that that's where their worth is. A mother sexualizing her daughter and her daughter's body is absolutely abusive. A narcissistic mother may put herself in competition with the daughter for her boyfriend or for other male attention. Being the daughter of a narcissist mother, you may experience a lot of mental health issues. Anxiety, depression, low self-esteem, suicidal tendencies, eating disorder, risky behaviors such as promiscuity, drug and alcohol use, perfectionism, people-pleasing, codependency. It can be really damaging to the daughter's sense of self. It's a bitter pill to swallow when you realize that your mother is not like other mothers. When you realize that you're never going to get un conditional love from your mother and every interaction with her is an uphill battle.
When you have a narcissistic mother and you are the daughter, there are two things going on. Number one, your mother is pathologically jealous of you. There you are, the younger, fresher, new, improved version of her. She resents that. She also hates the fact that you get to do stuff that she didn't get to do in her day. Travel, career, you name it. Number two, she sees you as her biggest rival. She will vie for attention, for position, for first place. Look at me, everybody. The language that your mother will use to you is that of put downs and criticism. When you realize that your mother is your mother and you're never going to change her, I hope you also realize that no one is going to make you feel small. No one will take away your shine, not even the person that gave birth to you. No one resents their daughters more than the narcissistic mother. As an NLP MP and a survivor of more than two decades of narcissistic mother-daughter abuse, I know a little bit about this. Narcissistic parents see their children as an extension of them, but with the narcissistic mother and their daughter, it's even more amplified. She sees that daughter as a literal reflection of all her shortcomings and faults. My mom pushed me to do better, but doing better than her was an absolute insult, which she would instantly tear me down for. She made passive aggressive snide remarks all the time and she would even say things like to me like who do you think you are? I was skinnier and prettier than you than you would ever be at 17. She'd call me fat, she'd call me ugly, she'd call me a whore and if I mastered something that was important to her that she was good at, she would tell me that I was no good at it and she would encourage me to pursue something else. To the narcissistic mother, the daughter is the exposure and realization of everything they are not and that destroys their ego so they must destroy the daughter. Follow for more. Their mothers were narcissistic, but the world does not, does not talk about it. Their mothers who remain children, compet competing with you, insecure, angry, and then they may not be explosive. Their abuse may be very subtle. That's the problem with women. They can have a very nice out there, but they draw comments. They just ask you, now, where, where, where? They just ask you, can you find a cloth that makes you look good? What's wrong with this hair of yours? Oh, they keep commenting about your legs. Will you guys help this girl with her legs? They're too fat. She can pick on something that even people like about you. She can pick on your teeth, your eyes. Oh, you are named after the mother-in-law who she hates. And she transfers the hatred. Comments. Some of you, you have not lifted your hands because you are not sure that it's abuse. Because it's not loud. It's not explosive. It's comments that eat at your self-esteem. It's an instability. She planted carefully while being very loving to other people. To other children so you have no you have nobody to agree with whether you are abused the word abuse seems too intense for what you know happened and you don't know that it is normal go for therapy and get a name for it sometimes you don't need diagnosis you just need to heal and move on with your life you don't need the name of the demon you just need to get it out of your life here we see the daughter is never appreciated she was never shown gratitude she never heard the words thank you she never received support or encouragement and she found herself giving up on important goals she once had, including the goal of pursuing an education. The mother could not make a mistake, but the only thing the daughter could do is make mistakes. Activities that the daughter chose to do, or values that she attempted to form, were designated as silly, worthless, and non-productive. If she chose an activity that met the mother's needs, that may be satisfactory, but usually nothing that the daughter did would be good enough. The daughter's hopes and wishes would not be tolerated, and she starts to think of herself as an extension of the mother. So some quotes here from the nullification component of the incompetent childhood. I have tried to deserve my existence by being useful. Right, a very sobering quote there. Somehow my mother sensed my weakness and insecurity. I have seen this many times in my clinical experience where this is how someone feels in that situation, and she would always create arguments that she could win. I find this was interesting because this really shows how the narcissist creates the situation on the battlefield, right? They choose the environment. They fight when they want to fight under the circumstances that they have designated. 
it gives them a marked advantage when it comes to winning these arguments. The next component is the demonstration of power. The mother determines what is permitted. Whether the daughter follows the mother's instructions or not, the daughter was always wrong. The continual expression of dissatisfaction is all the daughter gets to see. Now notice there is really no way here for the daughter to win. Compliance or rebellion lead to the same conclusion. So this is just a situation where the daughter is trapped, right? There aren't many variables that she has control over. There may be no variables that she can control. The daughter may be humiliated by the mother in front of others. The mother cannot regulate her behavior. Her use of power rises to the level of cruelty. The mother did not seem to be able to establish good boundaries and her behavior was erratic. This speaks to the no safe place to churn idea that we see with these situations. Again, the daughter is really trapped. The mother is not stable, not reliable, and the daughter never knows what to expect. So some quotes here related to this demonstration of power. When I put on clothes, I had to take them off because my mother said they were of an ugly color and I should wear something she had chosen, usually blue clothes. I hated blue for a long time. This idea of a individual hating what their mother preferred is something I've seen many times in my clinical experience. This is really a common theme, I think. There's this idea that when preferences are forced upon somebody, they're going to push back against that, which seems like a natural reaction. The next quote, she showed in every way how disappointed she was in me and how I ruined her life. So a narcissist blames their children, and really everybody, for how their life turned out. Shame is the last component of the incompetent childhood experience. This is considered to be a product of the demonstration of power and the nullification. So shame is like the result. The daughters were ashamed because they couldn't do anything right, and they felt like they had no value. They formed an identity based on inferiority, weakness, worthlessness, ineffectiveness, and imperfection. A quote here from this category, I felt ashamed of just existing. I tried to be non-existent and obedient. Right, so the daughter really kind of frames her life as a life of service and a life of suffering. A sad commentary about the effects of the narcissistic parent. A lot of toxic narcissistic moms will compete with their daughters and try to intentionally hold their yeah, this is my mom. In fact, my mom picked at every single thing about my appearance that she could. It's the reason I struggle with body dysmorphia to this day. But she would really go hard on the features that I got from my dad, specifically. My mom's white and my dad is Colombian, so I'm half Latina. And so I have a lot of features from my dad, like my nose shape, um, the texture of my hair, my skin is darker than hers. And she would really pick on those things. So there was like some subtle racism there too. Um, but most recently, last year, I actually graduated with my master's degree, which was a really big deal because I'm the first person in my family to do so. And uh, it also happened to be on the same day as my mom's birthday. So my kids were on the phone with her wishing her a happy birthday. And when she asked what they were doing, they said, oh, we're about to go to mom's graduation. She's getting her master's degree. And I heard my mom in the background go dead silent. And then she goes, huh, well, that's good for her. But narcissistic mothers, the fact that they can be very envious of their daughters, Narcissistic mothers, especially the covert narcissistic type, have what is known as pathological envy. They envy their children, they envy their daughters in particular, and they consider them a threat. And when a narcissistic mother devalues, criticizes, um, envies their daughter, sabotages their daughter, doesn't allow them to do well in life. By doing all these things, she diminishes the threat to her own very fragile self-esteem. And the hard thing is that when a daughter realizes that her mother has such envy towards her, she feels completely confused um, and cannot believe that her mother would feel this way about her. She feels very unworthy and very unloved because a healthy mother would not do this. A healthy mother would want what is best for her daughter, would celebrate with her daughter at every single success, would encourage her daughter to do well. But a narcissistic mother can't do this. Because of her fragile self-esteem, she will do everything she can to sabotage her daughter 
Or if her daughter is a golden child, she will encourage her daughter to do well and then she will show her daughter off to the world and say, look at what a fabulous daughter I have. Look how successful she is. She's only successful because I was her mother and I encouraged her. And then the limelight will be on the mother. She will be the reason why her daughter has done really well. But in my experience, and most of the um, daughters of narcissistic mothers that I have supported and coached, I have noticed that the envy side is much more prevalent that a lot of these um, daughters have had an envious mother that has sabotaged their growth and they have a lot of developmental arrests because of their mother sabotaging their growth to such an extent that they weren't able to form successful relationships or marriages that they weren't able to progress in their career because every time they try to take a step forward their mother would sabotage that by planting seeds of doubt. The problem is that once attention is drawn away from the mother, the mother cannot bear this. So she will make the child suffer by putting her down, by criticizing her, by punishing her, by sabotaging everything that the daughter has worked hard for. The thing that narcissistic mothers do is they isolate their daughters. They will isolate their kid at times because they don't want them to get influenced by external fact. They don't want them to be influenced by the outside world, insisting on religious practices to keep them in the faith, to keep them away from sinning, to keep them not being willful because being willful is a sin. So they keep them away from other people, which then like creates more enmeshment, which then like doesn't let their kids, their daughters see like that there's a world out there that they're and this ends up keeping them emotionally dependent on the mother and it's it's so hard to break free from. So the mother may expect her daughter to attend church constantly but also attend other types of religious events just so that her daughter will not hang out with other people. Your mother has this fantasy in her head that you're supposed to be a certain way and if you're not that way then that means that her fantasy, there's gaps in her fantasy. And there can't be gaps in her fantasy because if there's gaps in her fantasy, that means that she may be wrong. And if she's wrong, then she may have to face the rejection that she felt as a child and she's not willing to do that. She defends very hard against that. Very hard against that. Your mother is just coming from her unmet childhood needs. And unfortunately, like I feel like the daughters are the ones that get the worst of it because we're literally holding the mirrors to their face and you know a mother that's like good enough could be like why is my daughter like why am I feeling this way around my daughter like why am I feeling jealous why am I feeling envious why am I like thinking about my daughter in this way and like really introspect right and be like hmm what's going on how can I help myself but a narcissistic mother doesn't do that it's more like, oh, no, 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 I need to defend against this. Uh-uh. I need to keep up this persona of like, I'm the perfect mother because if I don't, then I'm going to be found out and I'm going to get rejected again. And there's no way that's going to happen. So it really depends how much shame your mother carries and like how narcissistic she is. Why narcissistic mothers hate their daughters? Now, at first glance, it may look like jealousy. And where that might be the case, some of the time, it's not always the case. The actress Jennifer Anderson, Anderson said that her mother told her every single day that she was ugly with a big nose. She said that to Jennifer Anderson. And Myra Carey's mother said, and I'll quote, you should only hope that one day you become half the singer that I am. She said that to Myra Carey. And whatever you think about Myra Carey, you can't say that she can't sing. So clearly these mothers are delusional. They don't see what we see and they don't hear what we hear. So what's going on? Well, what's actually going on is that these narcissistic mothers are threatened by their own daughters. The do not want their daughters to steal the limelight. And so what they want to do is snuff out any talent, any 
gift that they might have at an early age. They suffer with projection. So any anger or shit going on in, inside of their them, any negativity, they are going to project it onto their daughters. So you have to feel what I feel. They may be suffering from narcissistic injury. And what I mean by that is that if the daughter happens to look like their father or have their father's uh, mannerisms, that's going to really affect the mother. She's going to be reminded on a daily basis of her own hurt. She's going to say, you're the reason why I'm stuck. You're the reason why I haven't traveled. This child will get the blame for absolutely everything. But I want you to know that the only way out of this is no contact or minimal contact because DNA is not an excuse to be treated like shit. Here are 10 ways that narcissistic mothers emotionally wound their children. The first one is that narcissistic caregivers, particularly which is most often mothers, though not always, and it could be anyone, does not allow emotional separation. Basically, these mothers, fathers, caregivers create enmeshment where there's no real separation of self. So the child is emotionally bonded to the mother and the mother doesn't allow the child to separate, thereby holding the child responsible and engaged in role of emotional regulator and a dependence for the emotions of the parent. So the child feels responsible and enmeshed and unable to separate. Number two, a level of shame is placed just by regard of who the narcissistic parent is. The mother or caregiver hands off shame and creates a world for a child where toxic shame, feeling bad inside, is how the child internalizes a sense of self. From day one, it's always this dynamic where the child is never fully seen and mirrored and on top of that is this layer of you are the reason for everything in my world especially my unhappiness in some way or anything that you do that doesn't reflect well on me is about your failings and your value and not about you getting to be a child worthy of their own separate growth and development and self and beautiful development and self. Number three, that comparison and favoritism is the language of the day in the home. So if there are multiple siblings, the children learn that the emotional wounding is about at any moment I could lose my golden child status or that I will always be potentially in the invisible or scapegoat status. But there's a constant triangulation, there's a moving around psychologically of the value of the children and siblings, thereby making the children feel that when you're in that parent's favor, you are the most valuable member of the family because you actually feel that way and they often tell you that. Number. Four, you are an extension of the parent. And so what you do, how you look, what you say, it's like you are part of me. And when I feel worthy, I might make you feel more worthy, but when I don't, you will feel it. And you're not once again allowed to be separate. And what you do reflects upon me and my value. And I will only reward the things that I see as valuable extensions of who I am. And that makes it difficult for you to see value in yourself, especially if you're doing, loving, or saying things that don't align with the parent's belief about what creates value. The next one is there are often very significant boundary violations. So boundaries were taught don't matter. They don't exist and they only, any kind of like setup of rules or expectations or whatever the dynamic is, it is always shifting and moving and only determined by what the parent sees. So the parent says, you know, you can't do this or say this today that might change tomorrow. But if you try to then say, hey, you know, this seems like appropriate. We're not supposed to do these things. 
all those rules go out the window. So boundaries are often non-existent or meant to be trampled upon. Number six, competition is normal. You should never shine brighter than the parent and there will be a punishment for shining too bright. So inherent in the relationship is a value system around competition that the narcissistic parent will determine that um, only when I feel on top of the competition will you receive any form of love or support, whatever. It's very conditional. And the parent, I, I, I learned as a child that mommy, daddy, parent needs to feel like they're winning the competition at all times. So I have to kind of adjust accordingly. 